Yep. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi. So, so we have um, people from Team Apollo and Dev Robotics. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. How are you guys going? Good. Oh, thank you. Good. Yep. Good. Everyone's excited. Yep. Yeah. 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 All right. Do you guys want to take it away now? Yep, we can do that. Thanks very much. Uh, so my name's Rob and I'm a, a teacher and a mentor with Devil Robotics here in Tasmania. Uh, and uh, we've got a couple of other people here. So let's go around the group. Uh, so yeah, Nathaniel, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Nathaniel. and I'm a senior member of Devil Robotics. I've been doing it. I've been a member for about uh two years almost yep rose um i'm a member of devil robotics and i've been a member since i was in grade three which i'm now in grade eight so that will be quite a while now yeah <laughs> yep and eden and isabel we are new team of Polo. And my name is Eden. I'm an, and I'm seven years old. I'm Isabel and I am eight years old. Awesome. And the remainder of Team Apollo. So hey, we're Team Apollo. I'm Amelia, I'm fifteen years old. I'm Addison, I'm eleven years old. I'm Jacob, I'm thirteen years old. All right, so I've invited you all here to help out. Uh, we're going to be presenting some stuff on Spike Prime. Uh, and so I thought it would be really useful for people to see uh, just how easy it is to get started with Spike Prime. So, so all of these people have actually had a bit of a go with Spike Prime before, but I'm going to give them a challenge today that they haven't seen before. Uh, but first, we'll go around. Some, some of you have created things, I understand, um, in response to some of the challenges, some suggestions that I've given. So. I might just give a little bit of context first so that in our own group uh, during the lockdown period we've had some weekly challenges uh, so it started with making something to help at home during COVID uh, and then the most recent one was to create a mythical beast so uh, yeah Nathaniel do you want to show us what you've got oh, actually we might uh, actually I might get Eden and Isabel sorry I'll change the order there I'll get Eden and Isabel Bye. to show what they've done first if that's all right he made a dragon um, and coded it. Cool. And do you want to show us how that works? Yeah. So um, we have a story to it. Um, so one day, um, our, our mythical creature um, woke up and went to find himself some, a meal but he's a vegetarian. So he saw uh, this dead animal on the road. <coughs> so he walked past it. In a couple of minutes, he saw some nice green leaves. Yum, yum, yum. After a little bit, there was another dinosaur, another um, dragon. He came along, but he was a vegetarian too. So he tried to steal his food, but he wouldn't let him. <coughs> and then it was night time. Bye bye. Good night. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, and so those sounds were ones that you recorded yourselves? Yeah, yes. I recorded them. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Oh, oh nice work. Nice work. And so, Nathaniel, I understand you've also got a mythical beast there as well. Yes. So, this is the Block Ness Monster. And I figured, well, since the challenge this week was to create a mythical beast, the Block Ness Monster is a pretty good example. I figured it needs to be friendly to tourists because well there's something there must be something attractive so it's very like uh, your dragon this 
is also very particular about what it eats. I'm not sure about veggies or not, but it only eats, my apologies, it was being awkward. But it only eats purple food. Sorry, it's a bit big to fit on screen all at once. So you give it purple food and its eyes light up and it wags its tail. But if you feed it food that is not purple, just a minute, it's processing, it spits it out. And back here, you poke it. It scans around to look and see what happened. And if anyone, like a friendly tourist, waves. Sorry, wrong thing. Anyone, like a friendly tourist, waves. It winks. Oh, very nice. Cool. All right. Well done. That's awesome. And uh, and the rest of the team follow there. Uh, you did one for for uh, the COVID period, yes? Yep. So our challenge was create something that would be able to help in the COVID-19 period. And so we have created a COVID-19 safety bot. So everybody knows about social distancing. Our robot makes sure that you don't get too close. Cool. That's, that's uh, awesome. All right. So, so I'm going to go through and do a bit of an introduction to Spike Prime. Uh, I'm going to go run through the hardware, uh, what's new in the kit. We'll talk about the, the rechargeable hub and some of the other building elements, and then we'll have a look at the programming software. Uh, so while I'm doing that, I've got a challenge for, for you guys. Um, and then we'll check back in with you in a bit. Uh, so what I would like you to do is to build some kind of fan so something that spins around uh you might want to make it hands free so as you guys are aware and we'll, we'll run through with everybody else in a moment there are a bunch of different sensors so you might want to think about what sort of sensor you might want to use to activate your fan uh, and then how you might want the, the fan to to behave so you're going to need to use one of the motors to make something spin around um, are there any questions about that challenge? Sounds good. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good? Alrighty. Yeah. Um, so if you could just mute yourselves uh, and then we'll check back in. I'll see how you're going uh, maybe in about 20 minutes or so. All right. Awesome. So while that's happening, um, what I'm going to do is I will, um, I will just talk a little bit about the rechargeable brick here. So the idea is that uh, with the rechargeable brick, um, this is, is equivalent, I guess, to the EV3 brick. Uh, and the, the we do, it's probably important to know where this sits compared to EV3 and the, uh, the we do. So the we do is, is really sort of geared more for sort of six to nine year olds. Um, the, the uh, I'm sort of I'm pitched around sort of grade two to four, um, that sort of territory. The spike prime is more sort of grade five to eight, and then the EV3 brick is probably sort of from there up to, to year, year 12. Um, I've been using the EV3s with, with grade fives and up. Um, if I was sort of starting now and I didn't have any EV3 bricks working with grade fives and sixes, I'd be using the, the, the spike prime. Um, if you're familiar with the EV3 and you've used it in, say, FLL or something, then I guess, you know, we'll, we'll look at some of the differences between the, the two bricks and where there might be some advantages and disadvantages of using Spike Prime. Uh, so, for example, uh, on the display here, when, when we turn this on, and I guess that's one thing to, to note as well, is when you turn on the, uh, the Spike Prime, turns on really quick. So those of you familiar with the EV3 would know that takes a lot longer. Um, you'll notice there we've got the five by five grid display. So that's obviously different from the, the EV3. Uh, I think this was a hundred pixels by about 64 or something like that. Uh, so this is easier to see what's going on, but you've got less 
uh, less resolution. So displaying a text message or something uh, takes a, a lot longer. Um, but I think, you know, in certain situations where you're not right next to the robot, it's going to be easy to see what's going on because of the, the nice bright display. Um, as opposed to the EV3, which didn't have a backlight. Um, so we've got the, the ports there. So these are the same connection types as the Wii do. Uh, there are six ports compared to the EV3's eight. The difference being that with the EV3, there were four inputs and four outputs, whereas with the Spike Prime, all six ports are, can be used as either inputs or outputs. Uh, so that's, that gives you a bit more flexibility, so potentially you can have more sensors or more motors than you would have been able to have. The other thing to keep in mind too is this has got a built-in accelerometer and gyro sensor, um, three-axis accelerometer and three-axis gyro. So it's quite nice what you can do, and I'll, I'll demo that in a moment. Uh, the battery pack is a little bit smaller, I think, than the EV3. It doesn't have the option of using AA batteries, and it recharges while it's in the brick, so that's a bit different as well now as well but the capacity is pretty similar to the ev3 um, overall the volume it's about half the, the the overall volume because it's a little bit shorter and narrower and uh and not as tall um so that's the the brick itself i might actually uh just share my screen now and show you the 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 software and then we can actually sort of dive into the the gyro sensor on here which is quite nice um, so let me just set that up okay so hopefully you can see hopefully you can see uh, my spike prime window could I have one of my helpers give me a thumbs up whether you can see my spike prime screen okay cool that's encouraging uh, so this is what you come to at the start um, We'll, I'll sort of give you a bit of an overview of this in a bit, but for the moment, I'm just going to go into a new project. Um, you see we've got the choice here of word blocks or Python now. Uh, we'll just use word blocks for the moment. And um, I'm going to connect my bricks. So I'm going to connect by Bluetooth. So I'll go to connect. I'll choose connect by Bluetooth. Um, I will turn my brick on with help. Uh, and then I'll press and hold this little button in the top corner once it's on. And that starts sending out Bluetooth that then uh, a little window came up on my computer, which you wouldn't have been able to see, sorry, but um, that just sort of connected, picked it up. Uh, and now we've got this little green light up here on the dashboard. And if I click in there, um, we're going into the dashboard here and you can actually see it says your pitch roll. And so, if you work with model planes, you might know what that means, but uh, otherwise you're probably going to do it by experimenting. Or there's the option here, you can choose instead of tilt angle, um, you can actually choose to have it display. Uh, looks like, oh yeah, here we go. So I can choose to do by orientation or tilt angle, uh, the orientation. So now you can see it's actually displaying which side of the uh, the the brick is is upwards. So right side, left side, bottom, uh, the back, the front, and so we can use that within the coding as well. And so that's not that's quite nice. So the other mode, the tilt angle, is useful for making a robot turn through ninety degrees. Uh, and measuring that. So that could be quite useful in FLL, for example. Um, back in the, the software itself, uh, if I just close that window, uh, I'll just resize this and change my window around. So the way uh, programming works in the software is that we've got uh, the, the, the space here and we've got a bunch of these um, program starters or caps if you like and these it's all event driven programming so we've got things that'll happen when the program starts so for example I could choose to turn on the the 5x5 five five matrix with a smiley face when the program starts I just hit the triangle down here it 
puts the code on there and runs it straight away. And so there's my smiley face. Um, I could also make it that when different things happen with the, um, with the, the gyro sensor. So for example, so these are all hub related events. So when the front is up, for example, we could display, um, we could turn on the lights so that we've got an arrow pointing up, for example. So how about we set that up? So I just can turn on the, this grid here um, to make it look like an arrow. Uh, so now if I deploy that, uh, when front is up, actually I should probably make that when the top is up and I could then duplicate this and I could say when the bottom is up and I could change my arrow direction. So that was down. So code is on there now. When we're pointing up, we've got the arrow up. If I flip it around, the arrow keeps pointing you know, up relative to us, but it's pointing down on the, uh, the programmable hub. Uh, so you see that's actually flipping direction there as I turn this around. Uh, so similarly, we could have different events based on sensors. So I might just introduce the sensors at the moment. Uh, so we have got the, the touch sensor here. Uh, so I guess a couple of things to note. Uh, compared with the EV3 sensors, so we've got the EV3 touch sensor here. So this touch sensor was just on off whereas the new one for the Spike Prime actually measures Sorry. force in newtons. Sorry, are you um, sharing a screen that says other than like, welcome to Spike Prime? Uh, no. So that's just what you're sharing, right? Oh, that's a bit of a problem. All right, so how about I stop share and I will resume share again. Um, Okay, does that look better? Yeah, yeah, that makes it. Yeah, ah, I think every time I uh, was testing this out, I was sharing it from already being in the Spy Prime software. I didn't try sharing it just from the intro screen. Ah. Um, okay, so sorry, everybody. All right, so this is my sample code. Thanks so much for checking that. Um, all right, so this is, yeah, so I'll, I'll just run over that again. So this is showing when the program starts, turning the, the program on. And here's where I can sort of change the grid of, of the five by five matrix. Um, and similarly, I've got a separate stack for when top is up and a separate stack for when bottom is up. Uh, so also what I can do is when I plug in a, a sensor, and it, again, it doesn't matter which port I plug it into. You'll notice that on my screen here towards the top, it says A, it says oh, uh, zero Newtons. So as I press down on the sensor, it's actually going from zero up to 10 Newtons. So it's measuring force. It's not just measuring on off. Uh, you can change the mode for this. So what you didn't see before was me going into this dashboard and showing how you could change uh, the tilt angle, tilt angle for the gyro here uh, by clicking on this little drop down. Uh, we've got the, it should come up. It's been a little bit laggy at the moment. Uh, okay, that's not gonna, I think I'm, uh, I'm working my laptop very hard here at the moment. All right, so that is being a little bit temperamental. So let's, uh, let's not worry about that. Um, so yeah, so the, the, this is a force sensor, so measuring in Newtons. Um, the other thing to note is the cable is permanently attached, unlike the EV3 where you could replace the cables. The plus side is that the cable is a lot more flexible than the old EV3 cable, uh, and there's space in the housing um, for the cable to wrap around. Also the sensors, aren't all the same size uh, like the light sensor and touch sensor used to be with the EV3. So for example, with the, the light sensor or the color sensor here, um, this is just as, as small as it needs to be. There's also a distance sensor as well. So downside is you've got fixed length cables. 
Uh, plus side is that uh, they're, yeah, they're a lot more flexible. Uh, all right, how are our volunteers going here with, uh, or our demonstrators going with their fans? Do you need some more time? Need a little bit more time? All right, that's all good. So what's, what I'm going to do is we will have a look at the motors. So there are two sizes of motors that come with a kit. Uh, so there is this, uh, this is the, the medium motor and there is the large motor. And one thing that's really nice about these is that on the, on the motor itself, it's got a zero position. So like with the EV3 sensor, you can use this to measure rotation. So you can have it go around exactly one rotation. The, the issue with the EV3 motors was that when you turned your robot on, uh, you didn't know where the motor was. Uh, so there wasn't sort of an absolute coordinate. So what's nice with this is I could, uh, let's uh, plug my motor in here and I could have it that when the program starts, um, something that we're going to do is, well, I'll display that smiley face, but if I go to motors and, and I can choose motor A going the shortest path to position zero. So if I I'll just grab some something to put on there. All right, so just grab, grabbing a beam and a couple of connector pegs and I will attach uh, a little arm onto the motor and I'll have it lined up with the, the zero, for example. So let's say that's the, that's the, the zero position that we want. Uh, and so let's say I've just turned it on at this position. When I hit play on this, Uh, it's going to download that and the motor moves to that position. So we could have it that, um, let's say we want that always pointing up uh, and let's say I, I just attach this on. So another thing to point about the motors is that there's loads of connection points and same for all the sensors as well. There's stacks of connection points. So it's really easy to attach things on. Uh, and so I could make it, for example, that, um, as I move the, the, the hub around, this is going to change its its position as well. So I could uh, say go shortest path when top is up, go shortest path to zero. When top is down, I'll just duplicate this. Or when the, the hub sort of when the hub is up, so when the hub is is turned upside down, um, I'm going to make uh, this motor move to position. Let's say I go to 180. Let's try that out. So I'll just run that. All right, so when the motor is up, it's going up. Oh, sorry, when the hub is up, when the hub is down, it goes down. And so that's going to an absolute position. So, you know, that's nice. So if I turn the, the, the robot off, turn it back on again, if this is moved, it'll still put itself back into that, that same position. So a couple of other things while we're looking at the dashboard here uh, is you can manage the programs. Uh, again, I think I'm having issues while I'm on Zoom using Bluetooth. So what I'm going to do is, is I think I'm actually going to disconnect from Bluetooth and I'm going to connect up using, using USB. So I've been in the habit of using Bluetooth predominantly with the Spike Prime because it's been pretty easy, but obviously not up to the rigors of broadcasting live at the same time. Uh, so it's just automatically connected when I've connected by USB and hopefully now the dashboard is working a little bit smoother. Uh, so if we go to manage programs, okay, so in manage programs, um, this is quite nice. So you can actually get a summary of all the different programs that are on the brick. 
so the project that we've been working on is called Project 9, something I was messing around with yesterday, Accelerator Demo. Um, so start here, number one, whatever. So, and what's cool about this is you can move these around so we can change the order of those. And then when you're running programs on the brick, you can actually select which program you want. So zero, one, two, etc. cetera. Um, so this could be quite nice for FLL programs, for example. So you could have different programs and, and rearrange them in order um, so that you're ready to go at the competition. Uh, all right, is it time to check in with our teams? Has anybody got a fan ready to demonstrate? Yeah, we you do. You do? All right, cool. Well, what I will do, I will turn off my screen sharing and uh, let's check in. So, Eden and Isabel. Right, Eden's going to tell us about her fan. So, we made this fan. Nice. So, it's got um, a color sensor again and when it sees green and when it sees red okay, let's do it again green and red. nice green makes it spin around and red makes it stop spinning around awesome well done something Good i effort. really like about it is i got the person underneath there getting fanned <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so that, that's another point. This kit comes with a couple of little mini figs that you can use as part of your builds as well. So it's, it's really designed to be, you know, an easy, fun way to get started. Um, arguably that kind of hides the complexity and the sophistication going on with the, with, with the, uh, the hardware and the, the software here. But uh, well done girls, that's awesome. Um, so I've got a couple of questions to ask you. Um, so what did you find the hardest in that challenge? We've we found the hardest to find what the fan would be. Maybe actually, maybe trying to connect everything to pieces and getting everything to work. I think both of guys are it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. But it was more the building you found was the the ch most challenging part. Yeah, because yeah, the fan keep changing and we didn't know which would work the best. So then we just um thought this one would work for it because the piece that's actually connecting into that has a hole for it. So then we thought excellent. it would work. Excellent. Excellent. Oh, that's awesome. All right. Um, is anyone else ready to show their creation? Yep. All righty. So Addison, Amelia and Jacob, what have you got? Yep. It's a merry-go-round fan colorful thing. <laughs> it's so a merry-go-round and a fan. Yeah, functions as both. So it works off the ultrasonic sensor again. If you go close, it spins. If you move away, it stops spinning. Now, is it just turning the, the motors on or off or is, are you using some sort of speed? Is the speed varying? Um, we did think about varying the speed, but a basic on off switch is what it is right now. Okay, yeah. no, that's cool. Awesome, awesome, well done. Uh, Nathaniel or Rose, you guys ready to share? I'm ready. All right, Sorry. Nathaniel. Fan with the ultrasonic sensor again. And I found these unusually shaped pieces especially suited to it. Yep, nice. And so. And yes, it does move. It does blow too. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. And yes, it varies speed depending on how close your hand is. Oh, it does vary speed, does it? Yes. Cool, cool. So uh, we might actually have a look at how that works. Now you're not and really able to share your screen, so I might share mine. So you mine. can hold it up to your face, and the closer you hold it, the harder it blows. So we might need a sort of safety thing that if you get too close, it actually stops. Yeah. There could be a, a, a safety issue there. Um, and what about yourself, Rose? Do you need a, a little bit longer? Uh, I think you're still muted. Um, 
I'm just coding mine at the moment. So okay, like that's all right. Five minutes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, so, yeah. so for those who are interested, we might have a look. And so our team Apollo members, would you like to have a look at how you would vary the speed as you get closer? Cool. All right. So what I will do is I will share my screen and hopefully get it right this time. Um, all right. So that should be my screen there. So I'm going to go back to the home here and I will choose, uh, I will choose a new project. And uh, so what we're going to be doing is I'm just going to, I've got my motor connected. Um, I'm just going to take out the, uh, uh, I'll take out that longer beam. Um, and I might put, I might put a smaller beam on here just so I don't uh, injure myself while I'm experimenting. Uh, and, and so what we would like is this to spin um, as the distance gets closer or yeah, as, as, as the distance. So you can see actually just by plugging in the sensors, I haven't even done any building and you can see on my screen here, I'm already getting readings here showing me a distance. So what I would like is when the program starts, I would like to take the value from the ultrasonic sensor and maybe manipulate that in some way and use that distance to set the speed. So if we look at how you would set the, the speed, so I've got a block here. So I can set the speed of motor A to 75%. So that number there goes from 100% down to 0% is, is no movement or it's off. Uh, negative 100 would be it's going in the reverse direction. You can also change the motor direction with uh, there's another uh, sort of which will would start a moving turning in a particular direction as well. Uh, so maybe I will do this and I will just sort of test um, it moving for say a second or something and just see what happens. So I'll set my motor speed to seventy five percent. Start moving. Wait one second. So I just want to just just test that I've got something happening. All right. So that's that's making a motor move. Ah. This is interesting. It's still moving. Um, so I had it wait one second. I didn't tell it to stop the motor moving. So it just kept moving. Uh, so either you need uh, like one of these blocks, which will make a motor move for a particular number of rotations, uh, or we would, uh, we would need to stop the motor after we've waited one second. So there's, there's a few options for how we might do that. But in my case, I would actually like the motor to keep moving and I would like it to be proportional to, to this distance. So let's say I'm going to get a distance from say 100 to zero or something, but I want to, to blow faster as I get closer, I think. Um, I guess it could be the other way around, but what we can actually do is uh, if we go down in sensors, we, there's this curved block here. So for those who are familiar with Scratch, this should look very familiar. This is just a Scratch style programming. So I could set my speed to be at the moment at 75%, but I could set it to be that distance. Now that would set it once uh, and, and then that would be it. What I would really like to do now is I would like it to keep updating that speed. So, so I might just have it do it for um, a short period of time, say uh, half a second, and then I would like it to repeat this. So under control, we have these loop structures. So I've got a forever loop in here uh, and that'll sort of wrap around all of that. And so let's just try that out. So what I probably should do is actually build a bit of structure here. So I'm just going to attach that on there and I will attach uh, attach my motor on the other side. I'll just grab another, just grabbing these connector pins. So these are really useful pins for connecting things on uh, quickly. All right, so, so now I've got, um, you know, so a basic build here with a the sensor and the motor. And if I hit run on this. So this one's actually now slowing down as I get closer. 
and it speeds up as I move further away. So I guess uh, that's an option. So I, I guess it's easier to see if I move it towards the webcam and it's getting faster as we go away. So I guess the question now is, what would you do if we want to reverse things around? Um, so if we wanted to change it, so the it speeds up as we get closer. Any suggestions? Yes, in the place of the light blue block, put 100 minus the distance in, in the percentage. Right, so what we need to do is go into the green palette down here, the operators, and there's a subtraction block. And now it'll be 100 minus that distance, and that will flip things around. Uh, so that's quite nice as well. Um, all right, so we're getting closer as I get, oh, sorry, faster as we get closer and slower as we get further away. Um, might have to point it up at the ceiling actually to get, get it far enough away that it stops completely. All right, so that's quite nice that. All right, well done. So, um, do, oh, do those of you who've already done that, do you want another challenge? You want another challenge? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, alrighty. So, um, so either you could keep building on the fan, you could change the fan so it's got different modes, different speeds, you could, you could work with that, or if you want something uh, a little bit different, how about you think about home automation more generally, like making a door automatically open when you get close to it, uh, or you could um, do something to I don't know, entertain a pet or something while you're away. Um, other, what are some other ideas for home automation that you could think of? If you come yep. close to a door, then it automatically rings the doorbell. Okay, do you want to have a go at that? Yeah. Yeah. All righty. Um, so the others, Edison, Amelia, and Jacob, um, you've got another presentation on at three, so you'll need to leave in a bit. Do you have time for another challenge or do you need to go and prepare for that now? We should have time for another challenge. Okay, so do We're you want to have a go at doing... Sorry? We're up for another challenge, yeah. All right, so do you want to try and do some sort of home automation type idea? Sure. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. All right. And Nathaniel, have you got an idea what you want to do? Possibly. All righty. Uh, and Rose, have you got a uh, something ready to share? Do you need a bit longer? I've nearly finished the code. I'm just going over it and just... That's all right. So noticing. look, while you're doing that, I'm, I'm going to show off a few more things. I might do a little bit of a tour of the software. Uh, and then if I've got time right at the end, I might show some of the, the other building elements. So so I've sort of just dived into the software here. So those of you uh, watching at home, um, I'll just go back to the, the just the home screen. So they're getting started with Spike Prime screen. Um, and I'll, I'll just give you a bit of a tour of what's in here because this is quite nice. Um, so under start, they're getting started this one, two, three. This is sort of designed as your very first uh, way into the Spike Prime software. So, so the start here is just doing something with the, the basic Spike Prime uh, brick itself. Uh, number two is just a, a bunch of little modules that introduce you to each of the sensors and the motors. And then make it move, uh, just make something that, that moves with a little leg spinning around. So it's a nice introductory activity, it's a lot of fun. Uh, so that's all sort of for getting started. Then under units, there, uh, there's a whole stack of curriculum in here. So invention squad, Kickstarter business, uh, life hacks and competition ready. So within each of these, I'll just jump into one and show you an example. So invention squad, for example, there are I think about half a dozen different activities in here. They give you an idea of Sort of roughly how long each will take. Uh, there's some more information here that's useful for, for teachers or educators in particular. Um, but if you jump into one of these activities, we might go down to 
uh, something like the super cleanup is a nice one. Uh, so if we click start on that, what it does is it takes you into a, a new project uh, that will give you some building instructions and it will give you some, uh, some programming suggestions as well. Uh, and so the idea is this is sort of a 30 to 45 minute activity and that's from sort of start to finish and, and packing up. And so you'll see down the right hand side here, we've got some uh, different, uh, different pages. So page one of eight. So there's a video there that would display. I won't, won't go through that now. Uh, and then there's some, some a request to do some building. And so you're building some grabbers. So you end up building the parts that sort of make, and it comes in two different modules. So actually I will go into there. So into that build, you'll see here, you've actually got the instructions for the controller part, which is a sort of the, the hub and the, the controller. And you've got separate instructions for grabber, grabber one and grabber two. And so I've just made grabber two here. Um, and a, a lot of these building instructions are divided up into separate parts like this. So if you've got you know, two people working together, they can each be building separate parts and then bring those parts together. So that's quite nice. So having built it, um, you need to gather the litter. So you need some bits and pieces for that. Uh, and then here's a sample program to get you started. And in this case, it's testing out which of the different grabbers work better for different sorts of things. Uh, doing testing for weight, different shapes, etc., and then drawing a conclusion and recording the results. So all, all the lessons are, are structured like that with more or less help with the building and the, the programming. Some cases you're building something and then you've just sort of got to work out how to, how to make it work or to fix the program or whatever. Um, and in any case, every case, it's usually sort of a tip of the iceberg kind of thing in terms of making changes to the hardware, making changes to the programming as well. Um, so that's, that works really well. Um, if we go back out of this, uh, and I'll just give you a bit of an overview of those units again. So Invention Squad is all sort of design engineering type projects. Uh, so you see help, hopper race, super clean up, broken design for somebody. Um, if we go back out to, to this menu of unit plans, so kickstart a business uh, leans into sort of the, the computer science type idea. Uh, the Life hacks is more about data collection and the math side of things. And then competition ready, uh, I suspect is of interest to, to a lot of people watching this, probably coming from a first background. Uh, so this is quite nice in terms of setting up for, particularly for the first Lego League challenge, but for, for other competitions as well. Uh, and it really does uh, set you up nicely to, to complete you know, very straightforward uh, FLL challenge uh, mission. So for example, the, the driving around and then playing with objects gets you to a point where you build this sort of thing. And so again, for comparison with EV3, you look at the size of that compared to the size of my, uh, the Spike Prime compared to the size of a sort of basic EV3 robot with an attachment on the front to do something. So again, probably about half the volume in total, um, you know, which, which can be uh, useful for, for maneuvering around. Um, all right, so we better check in with our volunteers here. Hello, we are ready. All right, let's see what you've got. So we took a little bit of a different, we, t we put a bit of a spin on it. This is actually Addie's idea. Would you like to explain it? Um, yeah. Um, our, our robot is something to keep one of your kids around a baby mm -hmm. going into toddler age range um, and uh, keeping them busy while you need to work a bit and also teaching them to crawl and chase. Mm -hmm. So, if we swap our camera view, perfect, all right. Ready? So, our robot, as the baby crawls closer, runs away. Yeah. 
Thank cool. You. Very nice. Excellent. Thanks for that. And now you guys need to disappear to get ready for your presentation. So I'll let you go. Yes, and I'll say thank you very much for, uh, for joining you. in. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right, Rose, how are we going? Yeah, I've got my fan and I changed the gearing a bit, but not too much. So it moved a bit faster. So, and it changes speed with color. So. I'll oh, nice. the program. Hopefully it works. Okay, it's not responding. It only responded with red, but I'm getting there. I'll just fix that. Maybe there's no Okay, nearly there. <laughs> nearly there. No, that's all right. It's not quite working, but yeah. Keep on going. All right. Are, are you able to share your screen? I'm not sure. Um, um, that's all right. Yeah. All right. Have a bit of a replay with it. No, I can't no. screen it. No. Oh, cool. That's okay. That's okay. So, um, so something I might, uh, unless you're ready to share something, Nathaniel. No, that's all right. So what I will do now is I'm going to switch to my other camera. Um, and so what I will do is I'm going to show here. One moment, sorry. Okay, so what I've got here is just a selection of some of the other elements that are new. So one thing I didn't mention that's quite not when uh, didn't mention quite before when I was talking about motors um, and the cables is there's a new component here which is this wire clip and so it's just this little element here uh, and so what, that's quite nice that the the cables can fit into that and you can actually um, use those to just tidy up your cable so it helps with cable management a lot because uh, over the years, many teams have had uh, problems with the, the NXT cables and EV3 cables um, getting in the way. Uh, so that's quite nice. Uh, this, there used to be this frame, the five by seven frame. And so now you're seeing here, we've got some additional sizes. So we've got these larger frames. So this uh, magenta one is basically double the, the size of the, the black one plus a bit. Uh, and then the, the cyan or teal or whatever you call that one is is double again so those are really awesome and then the next step up from that is this fantastic base plate this is so cool for prototyping on you can build straight onto it uh, there are two of those in the base kit uh, and they are phenomenal uh, love those uh, we've also got some new wheels so this is in the core set and there are some larger ones in the expansion set as well uh, they're quite nice uh, there's a, a new variation of the caster wheel, so it's similar to what was in the EV3, but this one's plastic. Um, some people love them, some people hate them, uh, but that's there. Now, I mentioned the H-pins before, these are awesome. There's now these biscuits, which, you know, in some ways it's sort of like the, uh, the complement of the H-pin. So it's got the holes in there, and so you can then add those in, and you can do, you can do them building... Um, you know, straight off the side uh, as well. And so they're, they're super useful. Um, you know, I've had situations where I wanted two beams parallel to each other with a gap of like five or something. Um, these would solve that problem because I could just use this uh, and then I can have my beams on each side. I'll grab a couple of beams here. Um, so if I wanted to build on like that, you know, uh, and I can I can get that distance that gap covered quite easily. Um, another thing that you know, when we switched from or way back in the day from the RCX to NXT, uh, was going from studded building, so your classic sort of two by four Lego brick to Technic. And so there's a piece in the the kit now which helps bridge that gap a bit. It's got this uh, cross axle hole in it which fits. 
axles it makes it really easy to go from from the studded building through to the axles so that's quite a nice one uh, and one of the other new parts in here is this size gear believe it or not this didn't exist before so you couldn't go there were these bevel gears in Lego so these ones are Sort of fairly common. Uh, I think that's like a 20 tooth gear and this one must be a 40 tooth gear. Now those didn't mesh easily just on a beam like this. The 28 tooth gear bridges that gap. So you can go from, from a 40 to a 28 and you can go from the 20 to the 28 as well. And so you can make nice, quite nice gear chains with those. And again, span a a distance um, from from one axle to another axle that's spread out quite easily with that gear. All right, so we probably should look at wrapping things up shortly and taking questions. Uh, before we do that, oops. We've got our challenge ready. Nice. Okay. Ready to show us what you've got. Okay. So. We have our person, and if she comes more than 10 centimetres, less than 10 centimetres up, um, this, the sensor here will um, tell, tell this one to spin here, and, and then the door will open. And drive away. <laughs> cool. Oh, excellent. Thanks for that. How are you going, Rose? Um, yep, that seems to be working. Oh, yep. You got your different colours there? Yep. So it starts with, here it is, my fan, the two gears so it goes faster. Um, so it starts. It only starts with the red brick, so if you have to start it. And then the yellow brick, it should slow down. Yep, it's starting to slow down. And that's all, all I got to. I was going to do multiple colours, but didn't end up doing that. So, yeah. All right. Well done. Fantastic. Thank you. And Nathaniel, what have you got? An alarm clock that turns the lights on. Ah, nice. And makes a beep. So at present, it's only got a, a rain, uh, an alarm time of about ten seconds, but that's as much as practical. So to set it, you press the button here, and it counts down. If you're asleep, you wouldn't see it, but anyway. And then when it gets to ten, it turns the lights on. Nice. And makes loud beeps. Very good. Very good. Cool. All right. Thanks for that. Thanks for everyone for sharing that. Um, you're welcome to hang around for the, the questions and answers. There might be some questions for you. I don't know, but uh, we'll find out. Um, do we have any questions? Yep, we do. Um, uh -oh. Before that, <laughs> um, before that, I would just like to say that was awesome. I mean, like, who doesn't like Lego? Uh, so, first question. Would you recommend using Spike Prime? What are the differences between Spike Prime and EV3 and the bird bits? Um, right. Um, yeah. How early was that question asked? Because I, I have talked about that a little bit, but um, I guess the... Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, was that a recent question or was that early on in the hour? I think that was pretty early on. That's all right. Yeah, I, I, I guess it depends on what you're using it for. I think if you've already got EV3 kits and, and they're working, there's probably not a huge uh, reason to change at the moment, um, but but uh, but there are some things that are really nice that I that I really wish EV3 had. The you know so I, I build robots for use at, at demonstrations at exhibitions, uh, you know where I've got lots of people coming through and they've got to be really robust and they've got to work every time and that being able to zero it and, and know where zero is and I think for FLL that's really useful you know being able to get an arm that's in the right place and not have to rely on on lining everything up perfectly before you hit go um, 
you know, is, is, is really nice. Um, the absolute zeroing. Um, yeah, the cable management's quite nice. Being able to build more compactly, I think is going to be uh, a, a big advantage for some strategies. Yep. Yep. Um, another question. So from Mr. D, uh, he says, I teach at a low socioeconomic neighborhood with south of Wollongong. Is there a way that he can start economically, start a program with these at his school? Um, well, again, probably depends on the age group. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the cost is, I think, on par. I'm not sure exactly, but I think it's on par with the EV3. So I think if you were starting a program and if you're working with sort of that middle school age, um, I, I, would, I would be going with Spike Prime. Um, and certainly for our after school robotics group, uh, you know, you know, I'm very happy that we've been working with Spike Prime and it's been a lot easier for, for you know, the students have been working at home, our members have been working at home and I was expecting that very first week, uh, we would need a whole lot of training and a whole lot of tutorials and they just got things made immediately. Um, so it was, I felt like that was a lot easier to get started. I think um, that's about it. Thank you so much for your time. I really enjoyed everyone's creation. So it was pretty cool. Um, any questions from you guys? No, I think uh, you guys got anything else you wanted to share? Okay, all good. Thank you for your time. All right. Bye. All right, thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.